it's your girl Z from transvoicelessons.com and in this video we are going to answer questions from the YouTube community. So I made a YouTube community post and a bunch of people submitted questions and so I've grabbed some of those and let's go ahead and answer them. Question number one comes from Benip. Which one of your videos should I watch first because I have no clue where to start? Well, luckily for you, I actually just released a video for absolute beginners and I think that that is the best place to start on my channel. Thanks for your question. All right, now we have a question from AH. Has there ever been a time when you almost gave up training your voice? Yes, definitely. Early in the process, I would say about the first six to eight months, I was pretty convinced that it was impossible and I would never be able to do that. Even after I started feminizing my speaking voice, I was pretty convinced that it would be impossible for me to sing in a feminine way. Um, and I'm really glad I didn't give up because obviously um, it's one of my passions now. So great question. Uh, what's your favorite pride flag? I'm going to go with the classic trans pride flag, pink, blue, and white. I think it's beautiful colors and very balanced kind of flag. Favorite video game is StarCraft Brood War. Um, I've been playing StarCraft Brood War for about 22 years, 21 years around there. So uh, I still come back to it and play it frequently. So thank you. Random Tease asks, are you fully self-employed? If so, do you enjoy it? Uh, yeah, I'm completely self-employed and I have employees that also work alongside me in trans voice lessons um, And I'm very very grateful for it. Also, uh, what's your favorite voice you can do besides your natural one? Ah, uh, um, uh, so like thank you so much for your wonderful comment. Check this out <sighs> Uh, so it's a little bit weird for me to maintain this. I have to make sure that I have really good adequate engagement, but at the same time um, Push it down too much because then I there we go. So that's like a little bit better uh, Well, uh, I was on the campaign trail, right? Chicken wing, chicken wing, hot dog and bologna Chicken and macaroni Chilling with my home um, I would probably say like something like this is like my favorite voice besides my natural. Um, I really love like pushing the envelope on what's physically possible for me to be hyper feminine with while keeping everything completely relaxed and natural. So thank you so much for your question. Ethan Day asks, what do you suggest for people that have a hard time voice training due to a bad environment or lack of privacy? Are there ways to train discreetly but still effectively? Yeah, so first off, I think a lot of the sound production work that we're trying to do, meaning going higher, get live and get more comfortable. I think you can disguise that all as singing practice to unsupportive people. So you can kind of masquerade that and mask that as singing practice. Now, also luckily, we can actually practice and develop a lot of good resonance coordination entirely through noise on a phone or with voiceless exercises. And both of those are very quiet options. And so I don't think anybody would know that you're trying to practice feminization. Now, when you look at the further, like the end game of voice feminization, that's it's very hard to do without having the freedom to really try and make the right sound because you can practice the sound production and get ahead in that and you can practice the resonance and get ahead in that but a time's going to come where you're going to want to unify them and it will be really important for you to be able to just go all the way with it so uh, you can definitely train discreetly um, and i hope that helps you get some ideas Generally Koi asks a quick question and somewhat of a philosophical question. What inspires you to make videos about voice alongside your career in music? And what is your definition of success? Um, I started doing this whole like voice YouTube thing simply out of interest and passion to geek out and share the stuff I was fascinated with. I first started doing it on my music channel, but I didn't really like the fact that random people who would find my music would instantly know I'm trans. I'm, I don't really care if someone knows, but I didn't like how that would instantly be revealed. So I made trans voice lessons to YouTube. And uh, it was really just a place for me to document my findings and things that I was experimenting with. And over time it's grown and seeing the incredible impact that it has on the trans community is so, so spiritually rewarding. And at this point, um, I am passionate about making my voice stuff because it makes such a huge impact. My voice career makes a huge impact to me and that's ultimately the truest form of my expression and my art. But with these videos, it goes far beyond me. I get messages every day from people talking about how much their life has been impacted or changed by what I'm doing on this channel. And I think that is so profound. It's one thing to just create a piece and have people enjoy your music, 
but it's another to create free resources that allow people to self-actualize in a very profound way. So that is why I love doing this voice YouTube stuff. My definition of success, that's pretty challenging. Um, I just want to be comfortable, free, and I want to be able to make my art. And um, so I'm incredibly, infinitely thankful for what I have been given and what I've been uh, offered by the community in return for the resources that I make. But my definition of success is to be content and to create and to be prolific in my life. I have always concerned myself with creating art and um, I hope that if I make it to 80, I can turn around and see this massive path behind me filled with my art. So yeah, thank you for the great question. Addie asks, okay, there might not be an answer to this, but like, what's your favorite voice or vocal quality? Also, is there a particular aspect of voice you like modulating more than others? I am, I absolutely love resonance. In particular, I love resonance versus weight. That's where the vast majority of fun occurs for me. I also really like playing with like the nuances of resonance, balancing different structures, creating different shapes and hearing how it all plays. Uh, my favorite vocal quality is actually a feminine androgynous sound. Uh, I've been saying this a lot, but Savannah Brown's voice is a voice I love and that's pretty much my favorite kind of quality. I also really love like the super gossamer ethereal Disney princess stuff like I do sometimes um, but those are my favorite an androgynous feminine sound or like a hyper pure feminine sound. Brelu Manser asks how does singing in fem voice compare to speaking in fem voice in terms of quality of practice for the purpose of being able to sound feminine? Um, it's quite different. There's a lot of different conditions. Singing is way more dynamic. There's more volume fluctuation typically. There's a wider pitch range that's being expressed. The vowels require different treatment. So for the most part, it's similar. Like if you're wanting to like feminize or masculinize, you're going to continue, you know, adding or reducing weight and going down that path of resonance. But in singing, there's just more situations to be aware of, you know? It's not really about specific technique stuff. It's about specific technique stuff being applied to unique situations, like understanding how to cross your, your break, understanding how to navigate different areas of your falsetto and keep it all the right fullness that you're looking for, understanding how to transition and, and when to be heavier, when to be lighter. I just find there's more situations that crop up. And so for that reason, it's a little harder, but um, it's very similar in terms of the core technique of feminization though. Great question. Nina asks, I have dysphoria over my Adam's apple and want a trach shave, but I'm afraid of complications adversely affecting voice training. Would you recommend I go through with it? If so, are there any recommendations on who I should use or avoid? That's a great question. Um, look, trach shaves do come with a potential vocal risk. I'm not quite sure why. I have some theories that I won't expand on now. Um, but there does seem to be that kind of relationship there. I would recommend if you're wanting a tracheal shave to go to someone who is a trained otolaryngologist who deals in microsurgery of the vocal folds. Somebody like Dr. James Thomas in Portland would be a good recommendation for this. I would say mostly avoid the facial feminization surgeons. Oftentimes people will get uh, their trach shave done as part of FFS, but I tend to think that's a little bit sketchier because, you know, they're not vocal surgeons, they're facial plastic surgeons. So um, definitely be aware of the risks. If you're not a singer, it's really not that big of a deal. You might just get a little bit more kind of breathiness or hoarseness or roughness in the sound. Um, but typically what happens is it's the damage isn't really noticeable except for the very extreme upper ends of the falsetto. Uh, that's the main place we see it coming in. But even then, I would say based on everyone I've talked to who's had a trach shave, maybe 30 to 45% of people end up showing some kind of vocal complication, even though it's kind of minor. Don't quote me on those numbers. That's not a journal article. That's just based on my anecdotal evidence. So I hope that helps you in your decision. And dysphoria is a monster. And if that will help you feel better, then by all means, exercise your body autonomy. Thank you. S.A. Malone asks, I am non-binary. Are you able, once you attain a feminine voice, to switch back to your regular male voice at will without getting stuck? Um, honestly, I can't personally. I've tried really hard and I actually practice my male voice every day. And for some reason, I can't really do it very well. Other people can. Some people work on both voices at the same time and then they're able to keep both. I didn't touch my male voice at all for about three and a half years or four years. And now it just feels so strange. Like, 
um, if I try to do my most masculine, uh, um, if I try to do my, my, my most masculine voice there, that's what it comes out as really weird stuff. It especially goes away after I'm warmed up. So I did a live stream today and I'm already warmed up. And so I can't go near as heavy as I did at the beginning. But I think if you're practicing and you're developing both voices at the same time, it will be fine. But if you behaviorally avoid your masculine voice for years, like I did, you might not be fine. So I hope that's helpful. Violet Lynn says, I've seen you mention a hack to get very high R1, like 2000 Hertz. Uh, what is your hack? Thanks for uh, your amazing videos. Um, so this hack is like where I'll take the bottom of my tongue, place it back here by my teeth, in the front of my teeth, and then I will shape the upper back of my tongue really forcefully into a position where the entire space is like shrank all the way down, like Something like that. It's very hard to maintain and very hard to use, but it's a very cool sound when it is being maintained and is being used. But it's all about tongue control and sort of reshaping the entire structure of the tongue to have like a perfectly flush, near sealed, but not closed off space. So good luck with that. GeoRove asks, not a voice related question, but who are your favorite musicians, artists, or groups? Um, I really love Massive Attack. I really like the Pat Metheny group. I love Bill Evans Trio. I really like Amon Tobin. I really like Snail's House. Um, I like Joe Hirashi or whatever. I really like Kendrick Lamar. I really like Debussy. I really like Rachmaninoff. <laughs> Maddie asks, what are those numbers you usually put at the end of your post on Instagram? Those are just intonated chord structures. So those are frequency ratios. So if you see four against five, that literally means four hertz against five hertz or that ratio, and that creates a certain sound. So here are some of my favorite ratio chords. So yeah, I hope that's interesting for you. Why is Arnold Schoenberg one of your favorite composers? Well, that's because Arnold Schoenberg was my first composition teacher. I had learned how to compose music on my own and then I ended up kind of, kind of getting interested in music theory and then I somehow randomly found myself reading The Theory of Harmony by Arnold Schoenberg and that book changed my life. It set me up on the journey I'm on today. He was my first mentor. I quickly afterwards read the Theory of Harmony cover to cover about four times before I really understood any of it. And then I read the Structural Functions of Harmony. And then I read Fundamentals of Counterpoint and then Fundamentals of Music Composition. And so his books were very much some of the most influential pieces of the puzzle for me. And they allowed me to think about music in a more philosophical way so that when I got into college and I studied music theory, it was like I was way ahead of everybody because everybody was just doing like you know, basic tonal harmony or whatever. And I was already like Schoenberg out of my mind. So I'm super thankful for what he did. And he really made me feel connected to a lineage of craftspeople and composers who have been going through the Western tradition this whole time. So uh, I just felt like I was part of this deeper kind of line of composers. And I still feel that way. And I owe Schoenberg for that. So thank you, Schoenberg. Sarah asks, how do you advise to deal with shame? I feel like I'm doing everything right and still sound off and feel ridiculous. Honestly, for me, the easiest way is a reduction to absolute absurdity. We got to realize that what we're really doing is wiggling around little meat flaps in our neck and we're bending a tube in a certain way and it creates vibrations and pressure fluctuations. And so why would we be ashamed about a certain pressure fluctuation not being what we wanted it to be? When you start to strip your identity out of it and you start to think about it more at a physical level of what's really occurring, and, and not to say like go think about anatomy, but like when you really start to examine what's happening outside the lens of the culture that we were given and the culture that was pushed onto us, it really makes no sense for us to be shameful about any sounds that we can produce. They're all just configurations of our little soft tissue tube and different pressure fluctuations it creates. And getting myself out of the picture allowed me to think less about the shame and more about the sound. The Empty Skies asks, is there anything you wish you would have known when you started your transition that you would tell people now? Uh, honestly, yeah. 
Internalized transphobia is real and it takes an active mental effort to overcome it. I always thought when I started, oh, internalized transphobia, that's just some whatever, you know, that's just what people call no it's real society taught you to feel a certain way about transness and you need to work on deconstructing that and healing past it otherwise it's very challenging so that's what i would say really think about your beliefs about trans people your internal patterns around how you value and judge cisness versus transness and your own internal patterns of how you judge yourself for being trans those things were all things that came much later for me but i wish somebody would have pointed out to me much sooner Sakaria asks uh, so question time, would you mind doing some other non-voice training videos as a way to try new things and branch out? I'd love that. I definitely plan on doing that here in the future. I just hired an editor who's editing this video right now, I'm waving to her right now. And uh, I think we're going to start branching out then. I'm really excited to try different stuff. So bear with me while I experiment. I like the UDK asks, would you see yourself as an actress, voice, or otherwise? Would you see yourself for scoring a film series or video game? Uh, yeah, definitely. I'm down to do acting, voice acting stuff. That's totally cool with me. And also, yes, I actually have scored film and video game stuff before. So I'm definitely interested in that. But Fairy asks, how did you make money in the early days of transitioning and building your own YouTube and voice training job? I didn't. Uh, I was just a broke musical bum and I loved every second of it. So I was just sitting around making music endlessly and some people reached out to me when they heard my voice for lessons and so I got a little bit of money that way. But otherwise I was doing little commissions here and there for music composition, but I was just sitting around broke making music and enjoying every second of it. Um, how were you able to afford FFS? 100% of my FFS funds came from me saving up over the course of several years. And really, uh, most of it was from voice training. I would say about 95% of what I had saved up was from voice training. And the whole reason why I started really pursuing this as a job was because I thought it would be the only way I'd ever be able to afford FFS because I came from a rather poor background. Uh, do you have any plans for music soon? Songs, albums? Yes, absolutely. I'm about to release my fourth album and I'm working on a new song right now called Hex that I'm very excited about. So thank you for asking. Beep Boop asks, what inspired your interest in Zen Harmony? Do you have a favorite JI tuning system? Favorite EDO? My interest in Zen Harmony came from the fact that I was just hearing notes that didn't exist on the keyboard. And um, actually, my friend Tom Winspear, he sent me a link to Fabio Costa's Aphoriastic Madrigal, and that completely opened me up, and I was like, oh my god, how did I not know about this? So I really chased microtonality after that point. Uh, do I have a favorite JI tuning system? Yes, my own tuning system, which is primodality, or it's more it's more a perspective and a theory on the harmonic series and how to compose with it. Um, but I'm a primodalist and I really love undecimal tuning systems. So like things that have a lot of over 11 structures, those are beautiful. Um, favorite EDO? Right now my favorite EDO is 34 EDO, but I've been taking it as a pre-image and turning it into just intonation. So I'm playing in 30 for Neji most of the time right now. Great question. New York, New York asks, do you offer lessons to those who have had CTA surgery or other forms of VFS? Absolutely. I've worked with several people with various forms of vocal surgery. I think CTA is probably the rarest though, and I would be definitely interested in exploring that more with you if you would like. I, I've, I think I've had maybe one or two cases of people with CTA. Usually I get people who have had cases with Yison or a Wendler glottoplasty instead. So great question. I'd love to work with you. Do you have any faves or recommendations for makeup or brands? Uh, I really like this NYX um, liner, and I also really like uh, this concealer here, the uh, NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I've tried other concealers, but for some reason, I just really like this one a lot. I also really like the um, the blush by uh, Glossier, the, the sort of cloud cream blush. I'm not wearing it right now, but I really like that one as well, so maybe you could try some of those. So that's all for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this community question roundup. If you have any more questions or comments about what was said, please just post down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon if you enjoy these videos. Um, if you'd like to work together in private lessons, please just email transvoicelessons at gmail.com. If you would like to support the work I'm doing on this channel, please check us out on Patreon to join the community. Uh, otherwise, don't forget to check out my music and... Um, yeah, I think that's it. So thank you all so much for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.